Hello. I'm JD the Media Jack, and welcome to another edition of the Flipside Podcast, episode 467, getting ever so close to 500. Before we get into today's episode, thank you so much yet again to our executive producer for this episode, Red Wolf Don. If you would like to be an executive producer of my podcast, of my show, and of my content, just go to Patreon and support. It starts at a dollar, goes up to $50, and you can help out with everything that I do. Everything that comes from Patreon goes to this show and the content I produce. So if you'd like to, just search for The Media Jack on Patreon. The link is in the description down below, and I really do appreciate your continued support, either by watching or joining me on Patreon. Now, episode 467, a match made in artistic cosplay glowing universe it is Glow Siren and Elotro Mariachi. I'm going to let them tell their own story. Which creator did you happen upon first of the two of us? Elotro. I figured. <laughs> I'm going to talk longer. I, I people actually say that they found me before they even found him. Really? So. Yeah, different, different types of videos, I would say. Probably. The... It's probably my thirst traps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> when did each of you download the app and why did you download TikTok? You first since you've been on it longest. Yeah, I think I downloaded it in like 20, I think early 2019. I didn't start making content until I think little later i think maybe may or so but i downloaded it because i really missed vine uh, and people were like yeah it's kind of like vine adjacent i was like oh, i'm pretty sure that i'll find somebody on there that i like so i wasn't really looking to make content myself i was like yeah i'll do what i did on vine just watch people make weird content mm -hmm. and then i started making it myself but that, that We'll go a little bit further on the line for that one. So. <laughs> All right. And Glow? Uh, and mine, I downloaded it uh, March 2020 and started creating myself of April 2020, right as everything shut down during the pandemic. And I did that because the Comic-Cons were all canceled. And so it was a way for me to express all that creative, uh, like, cosplays and everything else. Um, and, I mean... Yeah, just been creating since then. So, what, about just over a year now, really, mm -hmm. you know, year and a half. How long have you considered your, each other, yourselves, uh, cosplays, or cosplayers as well as artists? Because what you do, I, I, in my mind, and no insult to anyone out there, but what you do goes a little beyond cosplay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're both artists, Um he does have an actual art degree. Uh, I did major in art before switching over to criminology instead. So I do have an art background. That was one of the also biggest things that we bonded over besides just doing glow stuff on TikTok is that we're both artists. Um, but our art styles are significantly different as well. So it does make for some interesting times. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, first and foremost, I'm actor theater based trained i started really getting into lighting special effects acting script uh playwriting and uh want to do some directing but due to covid i didn't get that chance so maybe one day but um i have that background so a lot of my stuff is very th theatrical so my lighting is very dramatic especially with certain characters such as my werewolf or my vampire it's very dramatic mm -hmm. and then with uh, the characters that I do, the art comes in there somewhat more just how I would place it on my body to make sure it looks like it's an actual piece of my body and it's not just there. But other than that, with cosplay, I didn't, I, I really honestly hadn't considered myself a cosplayer until I started actually putting on body paint or getting costumes because up until then it was just really goofy videos that transformed into acting videos. So it wasn't until, uh, I want to say, about a... Uh, so I've been on TikTok for two years, so I would say about a little, maybe a year 
into that mm-hmm. that I would start. I actually started doing cosplay, but other than that, I'm theater actor first, artist second, and then cosplayer, I guess, third. Gotcha. Yeah. And mine's a little differently is that I was an artist first, then a cosplayer, and then any sort of acting skills of whatever I have is way after that. <laughs> if you look at our videos close enough, you'll see he does focus a lot on his acting skills and his performance more so, whereas if you look at mine, I focus more on all my art skills. So if you look at our two skeletons, I mean, you can tell his just kind of quickly thrown on because he's trying to make more of a performance out of it. For me, the focus on mine is all about my art, the shading, the shadows, everything like that, because he deals with more sculpting in the art world yeah. um, as well as acting. But I deal with more paint and uh, drawing skills on that end. So our art styles are different in that aspect for sure. Yeah. <laughs> with your acting like there is a lot of physicality in your performance. Do you consider Mm -hmm. yourself uh, that sort of actor? Like, is that, is that where your training comes from? Is the the physicality and the grandiose expressions? Well, I'm theater trained and in theater since, you know, the nearest person uh, to the stage is a good, you know, 30 feet away. We're Mm -hmm. taught big expressions, big movements, big mouth movements and to enunciate so that, you know, the people in the back can still hear you, even if you're mic'd, because a mic, what a lot of people don't get is it makes you louder. It does not make you clearer. And that's that's the thing. And I learned that, you know, film acting with very subtle performances, small lit movements doesn't translate as well, especially when I'm doing uh, UV characters where you don't see a lot of my skin. You see what paint I have on. So that takes away a lot of the facial performance. So I have to make it a lot more physical. I have to make sure I kind of use my eyes and my mouth a lot more and my eyebrows. And then with the physicality... ADHD. (laughs) 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 That's... Honestly, truth be told, that's actually a big part of it so that I can... Since I have the energy and um, since I have... Besides theater training, I do have a like a couple years of uh, uh, Tang Sudo training. I I'm not flexible by any stretch of the means, but I can present different, I guess, personalities to a character. And then also, I'm just a huge fan of like Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, and, and like those type of physical actors that use their bodies to create an attitude and a personality for a character. And I try to implement that for each of my characters. So one isn't just like, oh, yeah, that's the bronze. That one's the brains. They each have a distinct look, feel and attitude to them. Yeah, no. Uh, Rob Williams, Jim Carrey and the like, they, they, their, their performance are larger than life. And even when it's subtle things, their performances are still very much larger than life because it's more than just the, it's more than just the lines. It's more, more than just the vocal skills. It's the body language and it's, it's what you're doing or what you're not doing that translate the most. And yeah, like, you know, theater, a lot of people, even my short stint in theater, you're told that from the very beginning is like perform for the person in the cheap seats. Because yeah. they're going to see it just as well as anyone else in front. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, a couple of my videos, I do go for subtle. Since now TikTok, it's a weird medium since you can play it over the top and very, you know, expressive. Or since, you know, you're on film, you can still be subtle with it, depending on what the audio is, what the performance is. So every now and again, I do take things uh in a more of a yeah down a notch and more to the film side of acting such as with my um your vampire uh, well my vampire and more so with any time i do keith ledger's joker Ah. um yeah and uh with his uh, especially since i kind of know it so well um i can take it down a notch i can really focus more on camera angles and zoom in zoom outs different pieces to make a uh, make a video a lot more streamlined and interesting to watch so it's not just one angle the entire time mm. and then be playing to that angle it's i can look wherever i want and i can just place the camera where i need it glow you uh have a, a, a criminology background 
And yes, I have a bachelor's in criminology with a minor in psychology. That is horrific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only for him. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It, it, how how did how did that how does that formulate into this incredible artwork that you have and your presence as glow on TikTok? So I've been an artist my entire life. Okay. Art club in high school, all of that. Started majoring in uh, studio art, the painting and the drawing um, in college. Um, and I just, I, I enjoyed the classes, but I didn't see myself having much of a career in what like the classes were teaching me because I mean it was just studio art mm. and I mean there's a reason why it's called starving artist yeah. you don't make much it's not a stable career well I happened to take a psychology class at one point as an elective absolutely fell in love with it just everything about it absolutely loved it so I ended up changing it over to psychology, but I didn't want to be a counselor or anything like that because I'm like, I got enough problems on my own. I don't need to listen to somebody else all day long either. So I had a friend and she was studying criminology. And I was like, you know what? I'll give that a shot. Took a criminology class. I actually fell more in love with criminology than I did the psychology class. So I completely transferred over to a full criminology major with a minor in psychology and kept my art on the side as a hobby. So this way, with my criminology degree, I could get a that stable job, uh, which I plan on going for a probation officer is my goal. Yep, uh, now that we moved down to Texas here shortly, in the next few months I can try to apply for that position, or at least as an assistant probation officer to start off with. But I just keep my art on the side, uh, if anything, comes up at me as an art career sometime in life I'll be more than happy to go that route as long as I know it will be a stable art career but I just don't really see myself doing that because I don't really have those connections to like the Hollywood industry to where I could be a special effects makeup artist so right now I'm just kind of really chilling and being happy with being able to just cosplay and be a makeup artist in my own home. You you would have to think at some point in time in the future that your artistry background as well as your your major and your minor would would kind of coexist because there has to be some sort of way to basically identify and translate patterns or or even like crime scenes and, and, and the like, which could be considered in a morbid way, uh, artistic in a way. It can. Uh, there's such thing as like a blood splatter analysis, um, stuff like that. So there are certain aspects like social work as well, especially if you're more going for like a social worker that works with minors where they need like a creative outlook or something. There are fields in that area. It's just not fields that really interest me enough to go after them. So for me, it's one of those, if an art career jumps out at me, I will be more than happy to take that because at least it is something that I love doing. Mm -hmm. But I also find love and interest inside the criminology field as well. And I know I could do some good um, in that world too so whatever life kind of throws at me i'm more than willing to excuse my french take it by the balls and go after it so <laughs> you're allowed to swear <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine it's, 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 it's like, i don't know how long i'm gonna be able to hold this in it's gonna happen <laughs> no it, it's totally fine it's totally if, if we were talking about uh if, if we were on my old radio show then no but no we're we're on the internet and the internet is well no holds barred <laughs> I can breathe a sigh of relief. Yes, oh, yeah. God. You're good. You're good. Uh, why UV art? Why these glow characters? And uh, like we already covered a, a few of your characters, but glow, do you have a gamut of characters as well? Oh, yeah. Um, I've Actually, I think I have more characters than you did, or at least about the same almost. Um, I just haven't brought, brought out some of them. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I also have i think a couple no no i think for the most part most of mine are all glow characters if i'm not mistaken but uh i haven't used a couple of them in a while 
uh, just because of either the complexity of them or I'm trying to, in the middle of updating one of them right now. So, in like, my original Siren uh, character I have that kind of pushed me out into the UV world, uh, she's getting an update look. So, I haven't okay. brought her out yet in a long time. But for me, the UV, I actually started out with LED lights uh, to begin with. So the LEDs are my original idea on that spectrum. When I had seen the TikTok uh, creator Ian ZG before he left TikTok, mm -hmm. um, he was an inspiration for me to start TikTok with the LEDs. It wasn't until I saw Formative Fox, another mm -hmm. wonderful TikTok creator that I became friends with on TikTok. And uh, she's the one that inspired me to get into paint. And I actually became friends with her due to that because she did finally come across my account as well and i've just kind of gone with it picked up ideas here and there and just had created a whole array of characters and then i met this goofball and <laughs> kind of <laughs> had <laughs> talked with him and it was his idea for the lady horseman and so i came up with those characters based on the inspiration and style of his characters as well not to copy but to, rather to complement them and they became a huge hit on my account and everybody loves them okay and for you why glow why why the uv why why working with the dark light well honestly when i first started doing tiktok a lot, like i said when i first started doing tiktok all of my videos were either really silly videos or acting videos they still are yeah <laughs> good point good point <laughs> the story has changed but uh, a friend of mine who his name at the time was Blazed and Confused, I think now it's Blazed and Amused. Yeah. Uh, he said with my physicality and how I move, he said that blacklight and UV work uh, paint, uh, body paint would be interesting for me to, uh, to do. And I was like, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I tried it. The first UV video I did, it was literally just like sticks and like the outline of my face it looked it looked bad i'm surprised it actually got any traction and then i was like you know what i like this I'm, i want to kind of explore it and then uh my first character was huakai the green skeleton mm -hmm. which in the end uh what's funny is she ended up naming him in a contest we hadn't even become friends at that point and really? then i was just a, was yeah, just a follower she at that named point. my first character and then we ended up talking and becoming friends and now dating and moved into <laughs> 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 so uh so from a friend's suggestion i should try uv and i got into it started loving it and then was just wanting to create more characters so i wouldn't have to do one character the entire time and just be known for that character and then also with other characters, I can have different physicalities, different attitudes, personalities, have a certain character for a, a certain audio type, like with uh, like the Four Horsemen, I've given each one of them uh, one of the doctors from Doctor Who, and just kind of go with that direction with certain characters. They get these audios, they get these audios, and it just makes it easier to categorize everything. Same here. All of my characters each have their own specific audios based on their personalities as well. So it does make it also kind of easier. So whenever we're doing duettable videos together, um, the personalities we each have for each of our characters, um, especially like my Lady Horseman with his, they kind of match up pretty well with those personalities together because um, each one's kind of like a couple. So we're able to do those specific types of audios that we have kind of lined up for those specific kind of characters together. And it, uh, it's, it's actually made for some pretty good videos from <laughs> us <laughs> duetting together um, combined in one video. So it works out really well. Um, so I got to interject and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record right now but, um, and apologize. I was unaware of the connection between Formative Fox and you, Glow. Formative Fox is actually a friend of mine. And not only that, I am her editor for her YouTube videos. Oh, that's oh, wow. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. And I know Formative Fox is actually going to be either watching this or listening to this a little bit later. And so to the Formative Fox, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was unaware of the connection and I should have gone through that avenue but uh, uh, anyway here we are 
<laughs> most of the glow characters, for the most part, that you see on TikTok, I would say at least a majority of the ones you see doing blacklight work, we're prob- we probably either know them or we're at least friends on TikTok with them, for the most part. Yeah. Um, it, there's not very many glow creators on TikTok, so, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to know who does and who doesn't um usually the ones i would say that we don't know are probably the very very tiny creators yeah, that are just starting just out. starting out or they have a certain type of niche that we don't Follow. dip into so yeah. we probably don't see as much as their work mm-hmm. but um yeah formative fox uh fallen I, spirit official fallen spirit uh uh hunter heart hunter heart mr genius yeah and Panda Effect are some of the bigger ones that we're all friends with on there. And we've been able to do some collaborations, some duet chains, um, all that stuff with. And bounce ideas off each other if we're, like, stuck. Like, what do I do? How can I make this character? Yeah. What do I do for this? So Yeah, like, uh, Fallen Spirit Official, he was doing a bunch of stuff. And he actually, when he got back into Blacklight, he's like, hey, should I do these Blacklights? What about this paint? So he, like, literally from him starting off his whole voodoo black light thing, he actually got all that advice from me and um, messaging me and asking for ideas and everything. And then he just took off as well on that too. So uh, we do really help each other out for sure in the glow world. Yeah. Oh, and then Jaws official too. He's, oh, yeah. he's another one, um, but he does mainly deal more with LEDs than he does uh, glow paint, but he does dabble a little bit in it. Mm. Gotcha. What are your favorite characters and what is your partner's like what is your favorite character of your partner so what is your favorite character of yourself and what is your favorite character of your partners so for my own favorite character i honestly can't choose between any of them because like i said each one gives me uh, a different attitude a different character to play and i really enjoy that right uh being an actor since I, it's it's more of those like you get to play so many different roles instead of just playing one. Uh, for hers, um, it would probably be a tie between Valka and Pompeii. Really? Not Skelet? That's surprising. Yeah, well, Valka is just, it's that, no, it, it, she reminds me a lot of my mom of that no-nonsense bullshit. She'll kick my ass even if she's shorter than I am. Okay, for so, a second, I'm glad you explained because I was like, wow, are we having mommy issues now? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And then Pompeii is just because I really like her design. You took what I did with Akuji and just made it so much more, uh, like, what's the word? Not well, attractive, yes, but there's, I guess, eye catching, a lot more pleasing to the eye. Okay. Because it's it's not just how I do it, where everything's just slapped on. It's very meticulous. It looks good. And with mine, it just looks like I literally just went, yep. Like, you're like looks good enough okay let's go film yeah, and i'm yeah. like no i still have to spend another two hours doing this one spot on me <laughs> exactly so yeah it would be valka her uh female horseman of war and then pompey the female horseman of death those are my two favorite characters of yours awesome <laughs> Um, for me, my favorite characters would probably be my Skelet, because uh, I do more of the sassy, cute uh, audios with her, a lot of like comedy skits, uh, because I can usually make really good facial expressions with her uh, due to the skeleton look, so raising eyebrows, stuff like that. Um, and she does really, really well with the viewers. Everyone seems to really like her the most. Mm. Uh, so I like hers. And also, obviously, compliments his green skeleton that I named, too. So it's <laughs> kind of mental in a way as well. Uh, I also like my Pompeii. She's also probably uh, one of my favorites as well, just because of the lava design. And I really just like the way I have her. Just that beautiful fluid motion of the lava cracks on me mm. works really, really well. So as far as the two glow characters, those would probably be my favorite. Um I oh no top fav top three favorite my glow ivy I haven't brought her out in a little while but my glow ivy really helped uh, me soar with followers too mm-hmm. uh, because it was completely different and you don't really see that design anywhere either um, so it's my poison ivy but glow version so she did really really well funny enough I thought of her up in like twenty minutes <laughs> so she was. 
Yeah, she was a kind of a last minute idea that ended up just taking off really well. As far as non glow characters, I would say my white wolf Luna is one of my favorites. Um, she, I just I like her cute little. She's adorable. Yeah, <laughs> she's an adorable like little white wolf. So I like her a lot due to that. Um, as far as my favorite characters of his is obviously the green skeleton Hokai who I ended up naming, right. um, and then also his Akuji, so his horseman of death as well, his lava character. Um, for also the look as well, the lava, but also just the character personality he gives it. It's more of that twitchy craziness. And so I like it because our death characters are basically more like Jessica Rabbit and Roger Rabbit <laughs> yeah. style, yeah. where mine is more that sultry death and his is just twitchy as heck. So that's, they're definitely some of my favorite ones for sure. Now, uh, you you guys uh, like you, you met because of TikTok, and uh, yeah. you're wonderfully together because of TikTok, but also because of the fact that you guys have just you know, gelled so well together, and you have uh, uh, sh shared the story with your followers on TikTok. But there's there's one question I want to ask um, because I really do suggest that if anyone wants to know that story, go to their TikTok. Uh, there's one question I want to ask: Is how nervous were you? upon meeting each other in person <laughs> the first time. <laughs> okay, so we had set up uh, kind of uh, finally meeting each other. She would come down to Texas and we would kind of just hang out for a while. Well, I got to the hotel first because since I already live in Texas, I was already pretty much there. Yeah. So I'm waiting for her, waiting at the hotel, sitting in my car. She pulls up and... My first instinct was, I'm going to just run out and go hug her. But my body's instinct was, oh, my God, stay in the car. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, honey, do the thing. Body, why? <laughs> and so she looked at me, and she was just like, motioning, <laughs> it's going to come out. I'm like, yeah, give me a second. Hold on. My legs aren't working. So finally. Focus my, myself. <laughs> Yeah, I got out of the car, and you know, the once we were both out of the car, we just ran into each other's arms and just hugged. Mm -hmm. I lifted her up, and after that, it was pretty much smooth sailing. Like it, it was, it stopped being full of nerves, and it was just relaxing. And it, it just felt like we were talking over the phone again. It was just back to the same old, um, you know, getting into the groove, feeling, you know easy to talk to, having fun, being able to go through different conversations in the matter of minutes. So it, at first, nerve wracking and, you know, shitting bricks. And then the rest <laughs> of it was, it was completely fine. <laughs> okay, so pretty much almost a similar experience, kind of. I don't know about the legs not really working part. Uh, I mean, my legs not working had to probably do with the fact that I had driven seven hours from my sister's house here in Dallas <laughs> for sitting so long. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it was still pretty much the same. Just, you know, I was, I'd say the only thing I was really nervous about was more the fact that I had driven out all, all that way. Right. We had been talking for like a month and a half, basically, by that point. He had already asked me to be his girlfriend at that point. So we had literally just started dating. And so I was nervous because even though we had video chatted, talked on the phone, all that, it's still nerve-wracking meeting someone in person that you're dating but haven't actually physically met them yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, please tell me he's he's the same as when he's on video chat and over the phone please tell me i'm not being catfished by like a dwarf or something hopefully <laughs> 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 i was pleasantly surprised and i was happy but <laughs> where you from know? the rally cat girl the long <laughs> but honestly i'm not gonna lie my my uncle also lives here in dallas and i had stayed with my uncle and my sisters here uh, as a halfway point because I had at the time lived in Missouri. So he was 15 hours apart from me. So oh. we did our relationship 15 hours apart for about eight and a half months uh, yeah. total before we moved in together recently. But my uncle, who was a previous police officer, 
Mind you, and Laredo's on the borderline of Texas and Mexico. Plata right. said, make sure you're safe so you don't get kidnapped <laughs> and taken into sex trafficking. That Call me if you need help and you're in danger. Because apparently he thought he was part of the Mexican <laughs> cartel over here or human trafficking. So now it's a bit of a joke. <laughs> And he still has yet to meet my uncle, too. So. Oh, that's <laughs> that's, that's going to be a fun day. <laughs> Playing the long game, no less. Eight months. <laughs> wow. Yep, uh, so it was it was nerve-wracking. But yeah. literally, like he said, once we just kind of ran into each other's arms, I mean, all the worries just melted away it just it felt more natural and like i had been with him and this was just like another weekend with him it did get harder after that because we spent time together then um he actually drove all the way up to meet me what was it december yeah it was was yeah so about a month later he drove up from texas to missouri to come see me for a weekend and then Valentine's Day, we kind of met in the middle, uh, sort of down in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Um, by that third trip, though, it was extremely hard and uh, just heartbreaking to be apart from each other at that point. It just because we both are very physically like intimate people, and it just it was hurting both of us so much to be away from each other for just so long that we ended up i think shortly after decided to to move in to move in together Mm. and at that point it was a matter of just financials and looking for a place which looking for an apartment that we got it i mean it took about a month long to look for it to get through and buy it or Mm. not buy it but rent it yeah and we yeah it's it's been a journey for us for sure you know, it, it is a beautiful story in the fact that it, it is like as, as difficult as it is meeting someone online and there is a mm-hmm. lot of hiccups and red flags and catfish and whatnot online. It, 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 it very much seems as though you guys took the time. There was there was mm-hmm. a lot of communication. There was a lot of sharing. There was a lot of time for a genuine connection to be built, which. Oh, yeah. Which in the day of instant gratification and in the like you guys are on a platform where it's instant gratification, taking the time to build something is more and more difficult and even more rare these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. It's uh, for me, it was more so how I was raised with my parents, both my dad and my mom, very old school, mm-hmm. um, you know, by the time for me, my first phone was, you know, the Nokia brick where then I got the Nokia flip phone. So not as strong, but still it's a tank. Yes. And then you know, I, my first smartphone was one of those where it was touchscreen, but it was very limited touchscreen. You yeah. Know, so <laughs> yeah. You could like maybe open up a menu. That was about it. And like, they taught me the meaning of a dollar they taught me like if you're gonna get something work for it always do this and like with a relationship it's 50 50 you work for it if something isn't working talk about it don't just get frustrated and throw it out the window and try to look for the new best thing you always try to work on something until it gets to the point of okay this definitely isn't gonna work but thankfully we're both very open with communication. Mm. If we feel one of us is having, you know, there's a problem that one of us isn't sharing, we'll, thank God, both of us are hard-headed as hell. We'll pry and poke and say, tell me, tell me, tell right. me, until <laughs> you're like, fine. Yeah, basically, we annoy each other into <laughs> finally speaking. Uh, but I was brought up pretty much almost very similar. I mean, we come from both blue-collar families, both very driven to hard work. And you, yeah, you, you, you know, respect and you, you earn that dollar yourself. It's, it's more worthwhile for sure. So, and I was always taught to put in the work in relationships. And so when people ask us, Hey, how, how did you like stay in a long distance relationship for so long? Like, how do you guys make it work? Because it is, it's extremely difficult. And we tell, we tell people, 
we're not going to lie. It's, it's hard work. If you're not both willing to put in the work, it's not going to work at all. Like the relationship will fall apart. And so you really have to communicate every day and put in that effort. And the moment one of you stops swinging that effort, it's just the relationship is over. So we were both very hard headed enough to <laughs> make it work, to communicate. We talked every single day, even if it was just for a little bit. Uh, even if we couldn't talk on the phone, we'd at least text and we'd video chat probably about every other day, every two days or so. Um, and it just, it helped to keep the relationship going and keeping it strong. And then on top of that, we would have movie date nights where we would do Netflix, like screen sharing or Hulu or Disney plus, and we'd watch a movie basically at the same time together. And that kind of helped mm. as well, for sure. Mm. And then also that since both of us had very different hours, hers were usually midday to closing shift. Mine were like 2 o'clock in the morning to midday. So we would work different hours. And we came to realize that, you know, we're not always going to be able to uh, always talk the same amount. We're not going to always have the time. So we need to understand that both of us work. We have lives outside of the relationship. And since... We have that long distance. We have to understand that, you know, if there's a day or a couple days or, you know, God forbid, a week that we're not going to be able to talk or have a date night or something like that, that it's not anything we did wrong. It's just, hey, you know, we have a life, too. And we would understand that that's how things worked. And then, you know, now that we're living together some days, uh, you know, I'm by the time she gets home, uh, I'm the only one here or I'm asleep or something like that. So we're understanding that sometimes some days it's not always going to be like a weekend where we spend all day with each other sometimes yeah. we're not going to see each other for a couple of days because of our weird time shifts for work yeah and it's another thing that we have to be able to work on yeah for sure um yeah even going like off on that <laughs> we we definitely lost a lot of sleeping hours for sure um but one thing was that we always agreed on is that we would always say good morning to one another and we'd always say good night, no mm. matter what. Even if we didn't talk through the whole day because of working, like sometimes I'd work, but he'd be sleeping all day mm. because he didn't much sleep from the night before, you know, so I may not hear back from him until like late that night or even if not that night because there has been times where he has literally slept through like an entire day and a half and I don't hear back from him and until the next is a day. Bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, we both developed insomnia, so that that was not fun. But um, he, I, he would always text back whenever he lo- woke up and be like, "Hey, I'm so sorry, babe. I I meant to text you. I just completely fell asleep." And so I just with the how the relationship was being so long distance, it's you really have to learn to take a step back and be like, "Oh, it's no for you know, no worries, nothing at all. Just want to make sure you're okay, that you're not dead in a ditch somewhere in Mexico." <laughs> So we really had to definitely be a lot more understanding in this kind of relationship just because of the situation we were in being so long distance with each other. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we were only 15 hours apart and not an entire country apart where another friend of mine on TikTok who does uh, fiber optics, L.A. Williams, um, her and her wife, LA, uh, LA Williams, she was in Australia and her wife, her now wife, Birdie was all the way in Canada. So ah. definitely, yeah, they definitely did long distance for sure. Yeah, we, we can't complain as much. Well, <laughs> and COVID shut down it. Yeah. Course, yes, so they true. really could not see each other at all. Yeah. We were able to drive at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and I've heard the horror stories of trying to get, uh, first of all, into australia and then secondly trying to get out of australia it is mm-hmm. near impossible right now and you know their their own rules their own regulations and how they're dealing with covid is completely up to the government of australia that is fine but it's still it is a nightmare so i i couldn't even imagine yeah she now lives in canada with her wife um just because it made things a lot easier she was finally able to get out and she went up to Canada, and within the first couple of days of being up there, she ended up marrying her wife, and they just live up happily in Canada now. That's, that's yeah. beautiful. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of beautiful things, has there ever been a situation or scenario uh, from your TikTok community that just took your breath away? 
usually with the community, like the cosplay and you know, uh, weird like weird side like the dark side of TikTok in a way, like yeah. the cosplayers or the the horror cosplayers or the, the horror creators. Yes, yeah. um, it's always very nice to see that you know a lot of the people that I follow and that I'm friends with they do you know, charity live streams, donations. If they get something, they, they'll they send it out to some charity to help them out. Yeah. Um, and just the camaraderie that I see among all of the people on TikTok that, that we're friends with, they're willing to, you know, put down like, hey, this is going to this person because they need some help. Or they'll make videos of like the whole, you know, you matter no matter what what you believe in, what you, who you love, what you do for a, uh, mm-hmm. for a living, you matter. And just that sort of attitude that positivity. when, yeah, the positivity, when a lot of people, they're like, oh, they cosplay as demons. They're not going to be nice people. It's kind of like how a lot of people think that metalheads, that they're not good people. Yet all the stories you hear of somebody going to a metal concert for the first time and being in a mosh pit, they're like, oh, I got knocked down. Everybody stopped and instantly picked me back up. Yeah. <laughs> to me. I didn't get knocked down. I had beer accidentally thrown on me because everyone's kind of like pushing their way and the couple next to me it was at a it was actually at Marilyn Manson concert and they're like oh my gosh are you okay and I mean they're just like decked out like full like goth metal style and I'm like yes I am thank you <laughs> <laughs> some of the nicest people I met concert, I go to an MGK concert and everyone's just like a complete asshole except for like the one girl in front of me making sure I was okay because I got stepped on by accident but <laughs> Uh, Yeah, it really is. It's amazing to see just how many friends you make through, especially the cosplay community on TikTok, because, like you said, it's an instant gratification, so you would think everyone would become more that selfish, like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to follow you because of this. I want to, you know, try to make myself bigger and just a lot of selfish people, and there are those selfish creators on TikTok, I'm not going to lie, not everyone is as big open-hearted as a lot of people are on TikTok. But we've met some wonderful people that just have big hearts. Uh, TikTok Diablo, or his username is Robocop uh, 17 17 Art. And he's got one of the biggest hearts I've ever seen of a creator on TikTok. He is just, he's an amazing creator. And he brought a lot of us together down in San Antonio for a huge collaboration we stayed in a a a huge house like an airbnb Mm. and we just had so much fun doing live streams raising money for charities videos uh meeting fans out in public like it was just a huge blast and just wonderful opportunity and i've met some other few uh fellow creators that are also similar and i've had people also do the auction thing for charity um, for other people that they do know as well and sometimes we're able to help sometimes we're not just our schedules can get too busy to try to film especially with uh, mine he can slap his paint on in about an hour or so but my paint takes anywhere between three to five hours to put on so a lot of the time when people ask me to do auction stuff I'm I have to be really careful with do I have the time to put all this paint on because if I'm putting all this paint on that means I'm going to be filming other videos not just doing an account takeover so it can make things a little difficult but it just the friendships that you make is probably the biggest like the most awesome thing on there on TikTok and it's usually the cosplay community for the most part that everyone's just so accepting Hmm. that in kink talk (laughs) (laughs) you're real accepting on that platform oh you like that let's be friends (laughs) (laughs) share and share alike right caring is (laughs) sharing is caring and the whole deal right Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking it at all. I'm not knocking it at all. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's accepting. <laughs> is there anything that you wish to cover before we wrap it up? I mean, the only thing I can say is if those of those who are listening to the podcast, if they're debating on whether to start out uh, to create or not, I always say go for it. Because it might seem a little scary at first, and I've had you know a few nerves rattled as well starting out. But in the end, it's it's worth it. 
it's just an amazing experience. And I know there are a lot of people out there that think it's silly, like, oh, you make TikTok videos, but they don't realize what comes with making those videos. You make friends along the way. You find your other half <laughs> somehow, sometimes. So it's just an amazing experience and worth the while. But it's one of those, you got to find what you love and you want to do and you want to create don't try to copy somebody else's exact look or their exact personality because it's not going to always translate well on you. You got to find what makes you you to yeah. be that creator that stands out apart from everybody else. Mm. Even if you are using the same audios. <laughs> um, well, to kind of piggyback off of that is if you're looking to start TikTok or any anything really is don't be afraid to start small. You can work your way up. Mm -hmm. If you're building characters for cosplay, don't be afraid to let those characters evolve. Like if you make a design and you're just like, okay, I'm just going to make the design so I can do it. And then later down the line, you're like, I really don't like it. You, Your characters can always evolve. They can always change. They can always become different than what they were. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the people that are like, oh, it's just TikTok. It's silly. It's stupid. It, I don't see the point. One video can make one person feel so much better. And I love those interactions. Uh, going back to your question, what, like, what's the most beautiful thing about TikTok? I completely forgot to mention this. Is this those people that whenever they see your video, it helps their day get better. If they're in the hospital, if they're going through like a, a rough breakup or maybe losing someone that's close to them, seeing our videos, whether they're goofy, uh, you know, sentimental. sentimental, they feel you know, that that respite Enjoy. of uh, of being able to laugh, to feel something other than sadness again. And I love doing that. And, you to, know, to bring somebody to smile, even for just those 15 seconds yeah. of that video, just to make somebody's day just that's that much better. And I've had multiple comments and I know he has on his account as well. People, they're like, I, you know, like I was going through the worst day and seeing your video literally just brightened it up. And to me, those kinds of comments just, it makes it worth the, the while. It makes it worth those hours of putting on paint and <laughs> knowing that I can make someone smile even just for 15 seconds. It's just, it's one of the biggest, warmest feelings. I get all the warm and fuzzies in my tummy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just always go for it. Start out, never be afraid to start out small and it's TikTok. There's a niche for everyone, no matter what you're into, whether it's cosplay, anime, gaming, Witch movies, talk. TV, history, uh, comic books, anything. There's literally a niche for everyone. So never feel that you're not going to find a place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Just just like anything else, when you're starting out a new craft, a new skill, a new art, whatever it is, it takes practice. But it also takes yeah. that first step. It takes the it takes the initiative to set up a canvas or open up a script or something like mm -hmm. that. You're not gonna knock it out of the park the first time. It takes yeah. practice and you eventually will find your own talent, your own skill, your own style as long as you For stick sure. to it. Right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Where can people find you on social media and where do you want them to find you? Uh, for me on my TikTok with my username Glow Siren and it's the same on Instagram, also Glow Siren as well. Um, and those would probably be my two platforms for public where everyone can visit. Mm -hmm. I don't post as much on Instagram, but I do occasionally try to update it at least. And I usually try to kind of keep my Facebook page a little more personal and towards family. So I don't usually give that one out uh, right. very much. Uh, let's see. For me, um, you know, on TikTok, El Otro Mariachi, same thing on Instagram. Um, I do have an art Instagram, uh, Sculpting, uh, the sc Sculpting an Actor, I believe it's called. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, honestly, since I haven't really made any art for the longest time. Um <laughs> And then uh, I think I, my YouTube channel that I, I need to start getting into again, uh, Small Fry Squid. And then same thing for, I think, Twitter. Same thing as Small Fry Squid for both my YouTube and my uh, Twitter. Perfect. I really appreciate the time you guys have taken to uh, hang out with me today. 
Oh, no, it was uh, pretty fun to yeah. kind of just tell our story instead of just in a couple videos or on a live, something that will be able, other people can see after we're done with it. So yeah. that, that was interesting. Uh, it's a new experience. It's nice. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.